This marks the beginning of media number two in the video deposition of Raquel Pennington. The time is approximately 4.56 p.m. And we're back on the record. Good afternoon again. Raquel. Hello. Hi. Um, we were just talking about a declaration you filed in this case, correct? Yes. Okay. And you filed a declaration, um, I believe you filed it, let me just see, on uh, the 27th of May, 2016, correct? What day was that? Uh, I'm not sure. The 27th of May, 2016 would be a Friday. Council, are you asking signed or filed? Because they might be different. Signed. Okay. Yes. Okay. You remember doing that? Yes. Okay. And you remember the whole idea of a declaration started with you having a conversation with Amber, correct? No. Okay. How did the idea of a declaration start? When I don't remember if Amber had said if she was telling me about the what's involved in domestic filing and what is needed and what is procedural, but I think that's where it started in a conversation about what filing means in general. Okay. How did this conversation occur? Where, where were you when you had this conversation? I don't remember. I think we were probably in her apartment. Okay. And she was uh, giving you some information about the filing of, of uh, a claim of domestic abuse? Yes. Okay. What did she tell you? She told me that it would be public record. Okay. That she would have to go to the courthouse. Um, she told me that because I was a witness to the fight, to right after when he was yelling at her and when I had walked in and she was holding her face and holding her hair, that I was an eyewitness to in the moment, the argument, okay. that Josh was a witness, that Liz was a witness, and that we might all be called upon to give statements, and I offered to give her mine on the record, knowing that it would be a public record and that that was now going to have a repercussion of my name being publicly associated. Okay. And when did she have this conversation with you? Sometime during that week before okay. she filed. Okay. If you knew that she filed on Friday of that week, the 27th, when you sign, say you signed your declaration, correct? Yes. Does that help you to recall when you had that conversation? No. I know that we had many conversations throughout the week. Okay. So was it before or after Amber had filed the papers the first time in court for dissolution? The divorce papers. Yes. After she filed the divorce papers. Okay. So it was after she filed the divorce papers, right? And it was sometime either that day or the next day. Do you remember? It was not the day that she filed the divorce papers. Okay. So it was some day after that. Correct. Okay. Had you been, had you met Samantha yet? No. Okay. Had you ever spoken to Samantha? No. Okay. When was the first time you spoke with Samantha? The first time I spoke with her was after we met at uh, Amber's publicist's house. Okay. Who is her publicist? Jody. Okay. What's Jody's last name? Gottlieb. Okay. So you had a meeting at, at Amber's publicist's house. I didn't have a meeting. You attended a meeting? I took Amber to her meeting. Okay. So she had a scheduled meeting at her publicist's house? No. Correct? It was an impromptu meeting? Yes. Okay. So you just decided to go over to the publicist's house? I drove, I went in the car with Amber for support. Okay. She asked you to, to go with her? I insisted that I go with her. Okay. 
So you you insisted that you go with her to a meeting with her publicist. I insist her that I I insisted that I drive her to the meeting. She was extremely upset. I didn't want her driving alone. Okay. She was upset about meeting with her publicist? No, she was upset about the divorce filing and the abuse and the entire situation. Okay. So she decided to go meet with her publicist, correct? Yes. Okay. And that at that meeting, Samantha also attended the meeting. Samantha showed up later. Okay. Was this Tuesday or Wednesday? I don't remember the exact date. Okay. But you think one of those days? I think one of those days. Okay. And where was the meeting held? There, Samantha and Amber met privately. I was in a completely different room, but we were at Jody's house. Where was the meeting? Where was the location of the meeting, Raquel? Jody's house. Do you know where that is? Um, I think it's in Larchmont area. Okay. And you got there and Jody was there? Yes. And Jody met with you and Samantha and Amber, correct? No. She never was in the room with the four, three of you? She opened the door to her home to let Samantha in. Okay. Do you have any understanding of why this meeting took place at a publicist's house? Because Amber didn't feel, she felt safe going to Jody. She had to meet with Jody anyways. Okay, and why did she have to meet with Jody? Because the, I guess, public news had broken out and she also needed to speak to her publicist about the repercussions of what was going to start happening in the public eye. Okay, and at this point she filed for dissolution, correct? Yes. For divorce? Yes. Okay. Um, she had made no public claim of any claim of, of violence or domestic abuse, correct? Objection, speculation. To your knowledge? Public, other she, than the public filing for her divorce. Right. Did she make, did, to your understanding, did she make any claim <clears throat> in her filing that, that she had been abused? I didn't read her divorce claim. Okay. Did you have any understanding of what claims were made? whether you read it or not. Did you have any understanding if she'd made a claim against Johnny of abuse? I don't know what is involved in a divorce filing or what or okay. what she filed that was okay. a legal document, so okay. I can't really speak okay. to it. And you hadn't been asked to give a declaration prior to that, correct? Correct. And you hadn't discussed with her giving a declaration prior to that, correct? Prior to her divorce filing? Prior to her divorce filing, correct? Correct. And you hadn't discussed with giving her a declaration prior to this meeting at the publicist's house, correct? Correct. Okay. So you arrive and Amber's intending to meet with the publicist. What was she unhappy about in terms of publicity, if anything? Was she happy or unhappy about the publicity? Objection comes from speculation. If you know. Speculation. Again, <laughs> I think we're getting objections by uh, lawyers other than the witness's lawyer? Uh, I'm not sure if that's client, proper. Sorry, I apologize. It just meant how, how would you know about what my client thought? Okay. Fine. Sorry. Okay. So um, was your understanding that Amber, Amber was upset? About filing for divorce? No. About the publicity that had come from her filing of the divorce. To my understanding, she was upset about the publicity that had come from filing for divorce. Okay, thank you. What was your understanding of the nature of her upset regarding the publicity over the divorce? The understanding of the you, nature of her upset, being upsetness at the, it, yes. that it was public and that it was happening. Okay. Did she express to you that she wasn't aware it was going to be public? Repeat the question. Did she express to you at any time that she was unaware that her filing for divorce would be public? She knew it was going to be public. Okay. But she was upset about that? Is that your testimony? Yes. Okay. And she was upset about there being publicity about her filing, correct? She was upset that the nature of filing divorce had to be public. Okay. And 
why was she talking to her publicist about that, if you know? I don't know exactly why. I know that she needs to talk to her publicist when there's publicity. Okay. Did she talk to you about why she was upset about the publicity? Yes. What did she say? I'm upset that this divorce has to be a public filing. Did she say anything else? She said in a general way that she just was upset that it was going to be a worldwide, that the world was going to know, that, you know, and be involved in a, in a very painful private event. Raquel, is it true that Amber talked to you about specific publicity that had come out that she was upset about? No. She spoke to you of nothing about specific publicity that came out? When? At any time? At any time when? Okay. Let's start with... Just be specific. Okay. In the last month? In the last... Okay. Let's that start day. with the week after May 21st. Okay. Did Amber ever express to you that she was upset with specific stories that had come out? Yes. What did she say to you? She said that the public perception was that she was a gold digger. Okay. And she was upset with that perception? Yes. And she wanted to change that perception? She knew that it wasn't true. Okay. And was upset that it was being portrayed that way. Okay. And did she want to do something to change that perception that she spoke with you about? Objection, I, speculation. Again, just for the record, I believe that counsel from Amber Heard is communicating with counsel from Ms. Pennington objections that cannot be made, properly made, by counsel for Ms. Heard, and that if Counsel for Ms. Pennington has objections, he should make them on his own. Well, again, for the record, there's two attorneys here, so I think you need to be clear who it is that you say is doing <laughs> okay. what. Again, hey. another um, throwing under the bus. It's not, uh, it's not, it's so. not throwing up under the bus, and I'll, I understand the spirit in which that's said. It's so that there's a clear record. Yes, of and, course. And there's nothing wrong with that. Two, I don't know that it's improper for counsel for Ms. Hurd to make objections to the formal questions. We certainly can't instruct the witness, but we can certainly make objections to the form of the question. Then may I invite, if, if that is true, that counsel for Ms. Hurd make the objections and then we can make a proper record rather than um, having counsel for Ms. Pennington parrot those objections? That's fine. Okay, thank you. Okay. What was your understanding, if any, of what Amber wanted to do about changing what you say was her perception that she was being portrayed as a gold digger. I don't know what she wanted to do. Did you discuss it with her? I listened to her be upset about it, but I'm not a publicist and I'm not a lawyer, so I, I really just tried to provide a supportive ear. Okay. And she complained to you, it's fair to say, on a multiple occasions about this portrayal in the media following her filing for divorce that she didn't like the fact that she was being portrayed she believed as a gold digger, correct? She thought that the technical filings on the divorce papers created an environment in which the media could take the perception of a gold digger and she wished that it could it, that it hadn't gone that direction okay 
Did she complain about the filings being filed as they were to you? She told me that they were filed that way, but complaining, I think, is a relative term. Well, was she upset about it? She was upset just generally during the week, so I can't extrapolate. I feel like that's really speculating on what specifically she's upset about when the entire time was a very upsetting time. Okay. But she specifically referenced this upset about being portrayed as a gold digger prior to the meeting with the publicist on Tuesday or Wednesday and after she had filed for divorce, correct? I don't know what she talked about in her meeting with her publicist what the on that Tuesday or Wednesday if she was lamenting about that. Well, you just told me that she was complaining to you about it, correct? She was complaining to me, but okay. as far as the, during the meeting with the publicist, I don't know what they talked about. I was eating pizza in the other room. Okay, so you excluded yourself and what, you were not present for any of the meeting no. that Amber had with the publicist and with Samantha, correct? I, Jody was not there for Samantha's meeting. They met privately. Okay, okay. And... Um, did you ever speak to Samantha about the case when you were at the publicist house? No. At no time did you speak with Samantha Spector about this case? She said, we can't speak about this. She announced to you, we can't speak about this. Was that at the beginning of the meeting? When she first arrived, she introduced herself and I introduced myself and she said, I need to talk to Amber privately. Okay, okay. And uh, you had no further conversation with Samantha Spector during the time you were at Jody's house? The she publicist? said goodbye. So literally she said, hello, I can't speak with you. And then she said goodbye at the end of the meeting. She literally might have said other words within an introductory right. period. I don't know if literally this, those three sentences I understand and I appreciate you being so careful. Did you have a conversation with Jody while you were at Jody's house? Yes. Okay. Could you tell us what that conversation was? We were ordering mozza pizza. She had ordered it for us. Uh -huh. It was taking a long time uh -huh. and I offered to help her call them, figure out what the delay was. Okay. And let, me, let me short in this because I think I asked a question that was ridiculously broad. Did you have any conversation <laughs> with Jody about Amber while you were at Jody's house? I can't hear say Um We talked uh, she asked me how Amber was doing because she knew I had been with her 24 hours a day and Jody's our friend, and I said she's extremely sad and shaken up. Um, she's scared. And did you describe to Jody what Amber was scared of? No. Okay, you just said she's scared. I, I think I, I inferred that she was scared within, and I'm paraphrasing a conversation of relating how our friend was to our other friend. Jody is her publicist, but she's also a, a close friend now too. So. Oh, she is. How long has Jody known Amber, if you know? I'm not sure. Okay. And uh, when you say they're close friends, is that based on your experience with the two of them? Yes. Okay. So you've been with them on multiple occasions together? Yes. Okay. How often do you see Jody? Um, I would see her when Amber had uh, publicity events, movie premieres. Okay. Things of that sort. Prior to that Tuesday or Wednesday, when was the last time you saw Jody? I think it was. It must have been at whatever the last uh, movie premiere was that she had been to, and I, I don't remember which one that was. Okay. At any time you were with Amber between May 21 and May 27. Were you aware that Amber was communicating with Jody? Yes, I was aware. Okay. When was the first time following May 21? That she was aware, not that the communication. That you were aware that the, she was communicating with Jody? Mm. Uh, 
I believe she called Jody oh. after she filed the papers on Monday. Okay. Is it your understanding that was the first time she'd spoken to Jody? Objection, speculation. Between May 21 and the time she spoke that you're referencing? It was the first time I was aware, a pr present at a time when a conversation was happening. Okay. And that conversation occurred on the day she filed for dissolution? Yes. Okay. What was that conversation? I don't know. You don't remember or you don't know? I don't know. She, I, she got on the phone and I gave them their privacy. Okay. You left. So it's fair to say she was actively communicating with Jody between May 21 and this meeting uh, on Wednesday, correct? Objection, speculation. If you know. It's your understanding uh, they were it, actively I would understand that they were communicating. Okay. Objection also vague as to actively okay. communicating. And um, at that meeting on Wednesday, uh, to your knowledge, Amber had filed absolutely no papers in court claiming that Johnny had abused her, correct? Objection, speculation, if vague as the time. As of the meeting, as of when Amber went to Jody's home? Yes. <clears throat> I, I believe so. I don't, I think that the first time she filed something publicly was the domestic violence claim the next Friday. Okay. And at that meeting, did you discuss anything about a declaration? I was not part of any meeting, so no. Okay. When was the first time you discussed with Amber filing a declaration? in her claim of domestic violence? Sometime, I, bel I guess Wednesday or Thursday. Okay, where were you, Raquel? I don't remember. Okay. Did she bring it up or did you bring it up? Um, I, I guess she brought it up because I didn't know about the, you know, legality of, you know, what was involved in filing a domestic violence claim. So when you testified earlier that you offered to file a declaration, mm -hmm. that was subsequent to her bringing it up? To telling me what was involved in the domestic violence claim and she said, you may be called as a witness and I said, I will offer my declaration to you as a witness to the extreme fight that I saw them have and her injuries okay. that I walked in on. And you were aware she was filing a declaration, correct? I was aware that she was filing a domestic violence claim. And she was told, she, she told you, you discussed with her that she was signing something like you were signing, correct? <coughs> that specific thing did not come up. You were aware that she was claiming events occurred both on April 21 and May 21? Yes. Okay. You knew that those were specific allegations she was making about domestic violence, correct? The, in the domestic violence claim? Yes. Yes. Okay. You were aware of that? You knew you were aware of what she was claiming, correct? She discussed that with you? She told me that she was going to declare what happened on the night, on the night that he threw the phone at her and hit her in the face. And she also discussed with you she, she was going to talk about April 21, correct? I don't remember if she told me that she was going to talk about April okay. 21. And you uh, agreed to tell what you say is the truth, correct? Yes. Okay. And you were going to put that in writing, correct? Correct. I offered to put it in writing for Okay. Her. Did somebody instruct you as to what to put in writing? Uh, objection to the extent that it calls for attorney client. I'm just instructing the client not to discuss any communications with her attorney. Did someone instruct you what to put in writing? Objection vague as to the term instruct. Did someone ever communicate with you about what you would put in writing? No. No one ever communicated with you about what the content of your declaration would be. The night that he terrorized our entire floor of our apartment, I wrote down every single thing 
so that I would remember it exactly as it happened. Josh wrote down every single thing. We wanted to remember clearly in the event that we would be called to witness that nightmare that I would know every single detail and how it happened because it was that terrifying and that important. Raquel, I need you to focus on my question, okay? Because this only works if I ask questions that you answer rather than talking about other things, okay? Okay. Okay. I'm going to move to strike as non responsive the witness's last statement. When you were preparing a declaration in this case, which you signed, did you talk to any other person about the content of the declaration? I told Joe and Sam what I was going to declare, which was on that legal form that had to be filled out. So those two people knew that I was going to declare this. My understanding was they had to file it because they are the lawyers. So they knew my declaration. I was in no way instructed. I wrote down everything from my original writing of the night that it happened. Very good. When you informed Joe and Sam about what you had written down, how did you do that? Via email. Okay. So you sent a series of emails back and forth to Joe and Sam, correct? No. Who did you send the emails to? I signed my document and sent it straight to Sam. Okay. Raquel, we really need to get to the truth here. And I want to do this as clearly and succinctly as possible. Absolutely. You just said that you were in communication with Joe and Sam at some point about your declaration, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. When was the first time you were in communication with Joe or Sam? The first time I was in communication with Sam was when I met her at Jody's home. Okay. Was anything about the declaration discussed? No. When was the first time you communicated with Sam about the declaration? Uh, I believe it was Thursday, the Thursday before uh, the court filing. Okay, tell me what happened. I wrote down my declaration to them. To, uh, we were at Joe's office and I wrote it all down, gave okay. it over to them. Okay, Joe was there? Joe was there. Sam was there? Sam was there. You communicated with them, correct? Yes. You had written some things on a piece of paper yourself prior to that date? Yes. Okay. You discussed with them how those things you had written down would get into your declaration, correct? Yes. They then offered to draft the declaration, correct? They... They prepared the declaration for you? They uh, showed me the uh, format that you have to write it in, yes. Okay. When you say they showed you the format, had they drafted, had they taken what you wrote down prior and turned it into a draft? No. You drafted the document you filed with the court? I verbally drafted every word. So you dictated that to somebody? Yes. And you dictated to somebody, I, Raquel Rose Pennington, declare as follows? Blair, no. I, I, I prepared it. I mean, okay. I'm just harassing her. <laughs> I mean, I, for the record, I'm by no means harassing her. Well, your her. voice got very loud. I'm so. asking her for truthful answers, and I don't appear to be getting them. I so she's not understanding the concept of it. It's not her fault that she doesn't understand it. I, I drafted it. I can only take one at a time. She's okay. not understanding the concept of it. Okay. Showing you what will be marked as it's two at this point. Two. Okay. Do you recognize that document? Yes. Okay. And am I correct that Samantha? Um, Spectre prepared that document. The this first part here, and then the first part, which is the the legalese. I I don't know legalese to start a declaration, but then these things are. This is my declaration here. The exhibits three, four, fives. Yeah. Raquel, for, is for it the record, for the record? She was yeah, pointing exactly. to paragraphs, not oh, exhibits. I'm sorry. She's pointing to paragraphs one and two that she says I prepared. Okay. In the end. Did you type that up? 
I did not type it. Did you write every single one of these words in paragraphs two through? In three through? Nineteen? Nineteen. I, I said them to Sam. You said them to Sam when? When I was telling her my declaration, my story. Okay. I think we're just going in circles. I prepared no, it. No, we're not. So um, you told her your story. Actually, yes, we did. And are. then she wrote down what you said? Correct? She, I was saying it. It's as if you have the computer in front of you done. typing down the words that I gave for this public statement. So Amber's Great. attorney prepared your declaration? Yes. Thank Great. you. Thank, Thank you. you. That's all I need. Thank you, Brooke. Okay. The time is approximately 5.26 p.m. and we're going off the record. Time is approximately 5.33 p.m. We're back on the record. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Raquel, you just during the break met with Amber's lawyers, Joe and Sam, is that correct? I met with my lawyer. You were not meeting with Joe and Sam? With no, Judge I was meeting with them. Did you have a communication with Joe and Sam? They said come out here. Did you talk to them? I talked to my lawyer. Did you talk to Joe or Sam? Did you speak words to Joe or Sam? I said, is this going to be over soon? And they were like, yeah, babe, we're getting out of here at 6. Did they say any words to you? No. They said no words they, to they you? They said, yeah, babe, we're getting out of here at 6. And that Sam was the said. only discussion they had with you? Yes. Did they say any words to your attorney? I don't know. Did they speculation. Did they say any words to your attorney? Uh, that's for my attorney to know. I was talking to him and... Did you listen to the conversation? No. You shut your ears off and stopped listening? I just was already, I was How trying to... shut their ears off? <laughs> <laughs> I was just taking a breath and, and getting ready to come Raquel, back Raquel, I so. noticed you, you know, talk... You guys, I need one at a time. Sure. Sorry. Raquel, a few minutes ago you were standing in the hallway conversing with Sam and Joe, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes? I was Rejection. talking to Jonathan. Okay. Were, what were you saying to Jonathan? Objection, instructing client not to answer. It's not a privileged conversation if non-attorneys for uh, Ms. Pennington are present. I understand, we weren't she, present. she didn't testify to. Were you uh, standing present. with Samantha and Joe and Jonathan in the hallway? I was standing with Jonathan in the hallway talking to him about a couple of things. What? Stop. Stop. Don't. Talk about anything. I'm not talk to me. talking about anything. I just we were just talking about the things that we were talking about. Is it they were having their own conversation? I have no idea what it was about. So Amber and Joe were standing there, correct? Amber is not. I mean, here. Uh, Joe and Samantha were standing there, correct? Vegas time. At what point? At the moment you were breaking just a few minutes ago. Well, no, the moment's a lot bigger. I had Jack yesterday. Mo moment is is. <coughs> Now, a Raquel, yes. in the last half hour, did you have any moment in time where you were standing with your attorney Jonathan and Samantha and Joe in the hallway? Yes. Were any words spoken while you were standing with Samantha and Joe and your attorney in the hallway? Objection by whom? By anyone. Objection here, sir. Objection over broad. By anyone. Objection vague. Did anyone speak? 
In the hallway? Yes. Yes. While you were standing with Jonathan and Samantha and Joe. People spoke. What did they say? I don't Judge know. I was speaking to my lawyer. Okay, what did you say to your lawyer? I don't I instruct not to answer. To tell you that. Well, you had other people that were not your lawyers standing there, so you do have to answer. Objection. They were not part of our conversation. I see. I see. Okay. So you filled out and signed a declaration that you say you dictated to Samantha, correct? My, my story part of it, part one and two, were already... The paper you referenced before, was it a paper you had with you? Um, no. Where is that paper? At my house. You still have it? I don't... Maybe. Maybe? Maybe. You don't know if you still have it? Just yeah, answered. I, I don't know if Again, I still have it. <laughs> I'm not sure of the correct procedure. I'm not experienced with three different attorneys making objections, two of whom don't represent the witness. So if we could have a system where if you'd like to make an objection, one of you from Ms. Hurd makes an objection, and one of you from Ms. Pennington makes an objection, maybe we can get through this. Well, your lack of familiarity with the, the process is not our, really our issue. We can object form of the question. I'm not instructing the witness. I'm not having anything to do with the witness. We can. On behalf yeah. of whom? On, on behalf of the petitioner. Yeah. The, on behalf okay. of the petitioner. Okay. Well, we then make, make your record attempt. and let I me continue the question. I just said argument. I said object. Okay. Argumentative. I said nothing more. That's fine. Raquel, you claim to have written down what you said you observed, correct? Yes. And you wrote it down and that was important for you to write it down, correct? Yes. Where is that piece of paper? I don't know. Did you write it on your computer? Uh, no. You wrote it handwritten? Yes. And you believe it's at your apartment? Objection, Ms. State's testimony. Do you believe it is at your apartment? Objection, asked and answered, Ms. State's testimony. Do you believe it is presently at your apartment? Objection. Same objection. Foundation. Do you believe it still exists? Objection, asked and answered. Do you believe it still exists? I have no idea. Okay. Would you look for it for us? Yes. Thank you. Would you produce it if you find it? Objection. Yes. Okay. Thank you. You, uh, Raquel, uh, you defined earlier for me your understanding of what abuse means, correct? Yes. Okay. I'd like to begin with your experiences if any, seeing Amber abuse Johnny, okay? Okay. On how many occasions have you seen Amber throw anything at Johnny? None. Never in your entire uh, time around Johnny and Amber have you seen her throw anything? Correct. How many times have you seen Amber with a closed fist punch Johnny? Zero. Okay. How many, uh, Amber has spoken to you about hitting Johnny, correct? No. She's spoken to you about throwing things, correct? Objection, Ms. State's testimony. Has she spoken to you about Objection. throwing things? I don't remember. You don't remember? Correct. So you remember some things, but you don't remember other things about abuse, correct? Objection, argument. Is that fair to say? Objection, abuse is a broad argument. term. You defined it for us, correct? Yes. Okay. Did you ever have a discussion with your best friend, Amber Heard, about Amber hitting Johnny? No. Never. Objection, argument. Correct? I just want to be clear. Never. A discussion about her hitting Any him. Any communication with her about her having physically assaulted Johnny. Objection. Asked and answered several times at this point. Has she ever said anything about that? Objection. Objection asked and answered. Is that no? What does that mean, that asked and answered? Means you've answered the question, right? Okay. okay. Means you've been asked Do you feel answer. like you understand my question? Yes. Okay. Has Amber ever described to you her getting mad at Johnny in fights? Objection, yes. vague. Yes. 
You understood my question and you answered it, correct? Has she ever said that she got mad at Johnny? Yes. Yes. Has she ever communicated to you that she's yelled at Johnny? Yes. And has she communicated to you that she's ever thrown anything at Johnny? No. She's never described to you throwing any object at John Depp. Objection Depp. asked and answered counsel. You keep asking the same question over and over again. It, I just want to be you an clear. Answer. We were very clear. And you I want to remind the witness that okay, she's I, under oath. Counsel, you asked the you question. Guys, the wait, stop. <clears throat> I need you to talk one at a time. All right, I'm going to have to stop. Okay. Please. Counsel, you asked the question and the answer is no. I don't know how much more clear we can get. Okay, I'll get clear. Thank you. Did you ever have a conversation with your friend Amber Heard about a fight she had had with Johnny on the island? Can you be more specific? Did she ever describe any fight she had on the island with Johnny? She said that they had fought on the island. And what did she tell you about that fight? She said it is bad, it's ugly. Did she say anything about what she had done in the fight? No. Did she say anything about what she claimed Johnny had done in the fight? No. Okay. But she did describe a fight on the island, correct? She told me that there was a very bad fight on the island. Okay. Did she ever describe to you having a fight with Johnny in Australia? Yes. Okay. Did she ever describe to you about what she did in that fight in Australia? She described the entire scenario. Okay. Did she ever tell you that she had thrown anything at Johnny? No. Did she ever tell you that she had cut Johnny? No. She didn't tell you that? No. Okay. Did she ever tell you that she had hit Johnny with a closed fist? No. Did she ever tell you of any time that she had, in your definition of abuse, abused Johnny? She told me that he had abused her. That's not my question, Raquel. My question is, in all of your communications with Amber, and you've had hundreds of communications, I assume. Yes. You're her best friend, correct? Yes. Okay. She's your best friend, correct? Yes. In all of those communications, it's your testimony here today that she has never discussed with you her, her abusing Johnny in any way. No. Okay. Has she harassing. ever has she ever discussed with you, Raquel, her yelling at Johnny? Objection asked and answered. We keep going back to the same thing. Counsel. That's not what I'm talking about. Yelling at Johnny. No, you did. Well, you say that yelling question was asked and answered. Go back and in the have you ever? Have you ever I'm not witnessed? Finished. I'm making an objection. Okay. And I'm clarifying the record. It's argumentative and it's harassing. You most definitely asked her about yelling, and she most definitely answered it. Now you're most definitely asking her about yelling again. Let me know when you're finished. I'm done. Great. I'm going to continue now. Okay. You are in their apartment, correct? On May on April 22nd, correct? Yes. You are looking at Amber, she's in bed, and you're at the door of her bedroom, correct? You described yourself as stopping, correct? I stopped, I saw yes. the glass, I saw the lamp broken, I saw the pictures ripped down off the walls. Okay, and you didn't see anyone break glass or rip pictures or break lamps, correct? I don't assume that they jumped off the table, but no, I didn't see them, see it happen. Correct. Raquel, what did you do once you walked into the bedroom? I very carefully walked over the glass. Did you have shoes on? Uh, no. Okay. But you walked over the glass? I stepped over the broken pieces. I tiptoed around the glass. How much glass was on the floor? A broken lamp, light bulb within the lamp, um, what looked like picture frame glass and yeah, a, a lot of glass. And you walked between the doorway and the bed? Yes. Okay. And you were barefoot? Yes. And Amber was in the bed? Yes. Okay. What was Amber doing? 
she was sleeping until I came into the room. Okay. So you had to wake Amber up? Yeah, when I opened the door and the light came in, she woke up when she heard the door and the light okay. came in. So when you got to her in the bed, she was asleep or awake? Asleep. Okay. So when you reached the bed, she was asleep? Yes. What did you do next? Climbed in the bed. Okay. You climbed in her bed, and what did you do next? And I gently started rubbing her shoulder to, you know, wake her up in a soft, gentle way, not startling. And she had, you know, kind of woken up a little bit to see me and just was a comforting way of trying to wake her up and let her know that it was me and uh, that it was okay. Okay, and what happened next? I um, showed her a video. I brought my iPad with me. I showed her a birthday video that I had made her. And the birthday video was from the night before? No, it was something that I had been compiling for weeks. Was it her birthday that day? Yes. Okay. So you showed her the birthday video, and did she like that? Yeah. Okay. And what happened next? Um, she started crying. Okay. Did she tell you what had happened? Yes. Okay, what did she tell you? She started crying and she said that it got really bad again and um, that he threw her phone out the window. She claimed to you that he had thrown her phone out the window. Yeah, okay. and we live on the top story, so it had okay. gone down and that um, she had, you know, told him that it really hurt her feelings that he had been so late to the party and that he started to get very defensive and immediately started yelling at her mm -hmm. and that um, it immediately escalated into one of their fights in which he's insulting her and yelling obscenities, calling her a stupid fucking whore, calling her demanding, calling her any number of things, saying that no one's ever going to fucking love her when she's old, that he, she could just go to fucking hell with all of her friends, and any number of the things that he always says time and time again. And he threw the phone, and she didn't have the phone, and she said he finally stormed out of the apartment sometime in the early morning. She said, then I texted you to come wake me up, because I knew when I woke up I was going to be really sad. And, and so I she told confided her what, in you? Yeah. And told you what happened? Yeah. Right. And she went into this level of detail? With you yeah. about the names, um, yeah, about yeah, okay. yelling about what do you called her? Okay, did she say anything else had happened? She said that um, he threw her phone. Okay. Then she tossed his phone. So she threw his phone out the window. Before or after, she said he threw her phone. After he threw her phone. Okay. And. Um, they continued to fight, and he was really mad, and he yelled, and then he stormed off and left. Okay. Lucas appears to be upset. Maybe we should take just a minute. <laughs> Are you okay? Can we keep going? I'd like to get you out of here. Well, we're not going to get out of here. She seems upset, and we're only going to go another 10 minutes. Do you need a break? Maybe just a minute. Okay. Do you want to sit here, or do you want to go outside? I just want to take a breath outside. Okay, that's fine. Yes, thank you. The time is approximately 5.50 p.m. and we're going off the
The time is approximately 5.54 p.m. and we're back on the record. So Raquel, on the morning of the 22nd, Amber talked to you uh, about what she said happened the night before, correct? Yes. And she told you that uh, Johnny had thrown her phone out the window, correct? Yes. And she told you that she had thrown Johnny's phone out the window. Yes. And she told you that he had yelled at her those ugly things. Yes. Correct? And she was very specific about what she said happened when she confided in you, correct? Yes. Okay. And uh, did she tell you anything else? She said, obviously, you see, <coughs> broke a bunch of stuff. He's broken more pictures on the wall. I don't know where he is. Did she say that he had done anything else? Not that I can remember. Okay. And if it was something significant, it's fair to say that you would probably remember. Objection this was, a, was this a very serious conversation you were having? Objection calls for speculation. Um, it was a serious conversation, yes. Okay. So um, after she told you this, what did you do? I said, okay, why don't you get in the shower? Okay. And I'm going to go downstairs, make you some coffee, take the dogs out. Okay, that's what you told her? Mm -hmm. Okay. You were still in the bed with her, correct? Mm -hmm. You were close to her, correct? Yes. Okay. You were able to see her face? Yes. Correct. Did you see any injuries to her face? It was very dark in there. It's pitch black in her room. Okay, so there was no light in the room? No light. So you couldn't see her face at all, correct? Only by the uh, under light of the door. Okay. okay. Did she tell you she had any injuries? No. Okay. And you recommended she get in the shower, correct? Yes. And did you stay while she showered? Downstairs. Okay. And at some point, did she come downstairs? Yes. Was she all dressed when she came downstairs, or was she still undressed? She had her robe on. Okay. So she came down in her robe, and you were, was there a light downstairs? Yes. And you were able to see her downstairs? Yes. And you were able to see her face, correct? Yes. Did you see any injuries on her face when she came downstairs? Well, her whole face was swollen and puffy, like her entire eyes and everything. <coughs> I don't know if it's injuries, being upset, whatever it was. She looked very unlike herself. Dark circles under her eyes. She looked awful. Did you believe that was from her crying? I didn't know what it was from. Did you ask her? No. You had no conversation with her about this dramatic appearance on her face? I was trying to, it was her birthday, okay. so I was trying to get her coffee, get her some toast, get the day going in a more positive direction. So you were trying to be upbeat, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. And um, you stayed with her for a period of time? Mm -hmm. How yes. long were you with her? On and off, I was packing up to go on the trip, taking care of some work things that I had to take care of. I think we finally got on the road around sometime after 2 p.m. Okay. And you were in and out of number five where Amber stays? Number three. I mean, number three where Amber stays? Yeah, all of the apartments are connected, so okay. she can go back. She walks through three, four, five, PH5 is where her personal bathroom and belongings are, but okay. you know she'll be going through all three of those apartments. Okay. And you were with her throughout the day in three, four, and five? Yes. Okay. And when you say you saw her face puffy and red, mm -hmm. did you see any uh, bruises on her face? Not that I can judge were bruises. Did you see any bruises on her body? Mm, I don't remember any now. Did you see any cuts on her face? Mm, nope. Did you see any cuts on her body? I didn't inspect her entire no, just body. just you saw her. I mean, she was wearing a full-length robe right. down to the floor, so. 
Okay. It's not that I but any saw her or didn't see her skin. She but on the backs of her hands, I did not see and any. And on her face, she didn't see any, correct? Objection, Vegas, to anything. Did you see any injuries to her face? I don't know if they were injuries, why her face looked bad. I can't speculate on if it was an injury or not. Okay, it's uh, let me just interject. Yeah. It's 6 o'clock. So I think we We're going to 6.15. No. We're I, I, go that's to what six. was the agreement. I can't, no, can't. between 6 and 6, we, we actually, I think it's 6 o'clock. Yeah. But in any case, we're going to stop. Yeah, I can't. And we're you guys, I, let me just say something. If we can go off record for a second. The time is approximately 5:59 p.m. and we're going off the record. The time is approximately 6 p.m. and we'll back on the record. Okay, thank you. So, uh, Ms. Pennington, you've agreed to return on July 14 at 1 p.m. to complete your testimony. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Okay. And you are going to look for, uh, would you bring your phone at that time for me, please? Was that, would you if do John, that? If, if, um, I mean, if it's uh, legally, Don, if on. that's okay. Don, let me. She will, she, whether she brings her phone or not, I don't think it's an issue because she's not going to hand over her phone. Again, if there's an appropriate request for documents, it'll be dealt with. But even if her phone were here, I would not allow her to give it to anybody. Okay. So I, I believe we discussed you bringing some text messages that you had sent and received from Amber. Again, will you bring a, those? There should be a proper request for documents and she will we will respond okay you've received that request for documents the, the, that you a, referred to the, I believe there's a I'm, separate I'm asking the, the witness I understand but it's vague as to the request for documents and the witness won't understand because I believe it's tied to the appearance at a hearing that's now been continued. We've only, we went on the record just to stipulate that she'll appear again. And now we're going to have another deposition. Can, I have to leave. May I now. suggest this, and I have so. to go with her. Um, nice may meeting I you, Samantha. This, there hold is. on. Yes. May I suggest this, that you can further meet and confer about what she is or is not going to bring? Are we not able to continue going even if counsel for her is not here? No, no she's a party she to says that she's leaving. I, she I hasn't agree. said that. Well, I thought she did. <laughs> I gotta go. Okay, great. It's over. Um, we they're cutting it off. Okay, so, so we, um, are we gonna get the dates? We I have the date. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go off the record. The time is approximately six or two p.m. So The time is approximately 6.03 p.m. and we're back on the record. I'm going to offer the following stipulation that the court reporter be relieved of a responsibility with respect to the original transcript and that the original be provided and signed 
by Raquel under oath, under penalty of perjury. Um, the original be sent to your office. Um, can we do a shortened time period? Can we do it um, in? No, we can't because I'm in trial for three weeks. When can you get the transcript to them? Do you think? Just tell me when you want it. To them when you want it. Can you do it by the end of next week? The beginning of mm -hmm. So we expect that you'll receive the. I don't have a calendar in front of me, but. When you receive the deposition transcript, which should be at the beginning of next week, you will sign it within 30 days of receipt by your lawyer. If there's any changes, then you will provide us with those changes. If you do not provide us with the changes by the time by the time the 30 days are up, it'll be deemed true and correct. If you have corrections if you're counsel, you'll send them to me via fax or by email. Um, the original transcript will be maintained by your office, I assume. Yes. Okay. And will be made available at the time of hearing without notice. If it's not available, then a certified copy will be made available. Um, or if an original is destroyed in any way. Um, a certified and signed copy. A certified and signed copy, yes. Uh, so we're going to suspend this deposition until July 14th, 14th, 14th at 1 p.m. here yeah. at this office. Thank you, okay. Sister. Thank you. Now, this concludes today's video. Okay. That Just one account. more thing. Um, Jonathan. How did we resolve the document she said she was going to look for, the statement that she said she wrote down, and the text? Are we going to, is she going to voluntarily produce those or only by subpoena? I would suggest, um, as far as text messages go, I would suggest, uh, well, you know what, no, I think it should be requested. I, I, I think it should be requested okay. through the Yes. Let me suggest. I just want the. No, no let, me, let me suggest <laughs> yes. this, okay? Because it yeah. really isn't, I don't think, an issue. Um, you can request that she's a witness. You can you can serve a subpoena and you can request documents. I believe some of them you've already requested pursuant to subpoena. Right. I believe. I believe um, so too. And so, to the extent that there isn't an objection, then those things are, are, are likely to be produced. Some of the things that you've asked for, text messages, are, are likely to be produced, I would presume. Okay. okay? Um, I don't think she's going to produce her telephone. Um, that's up to Mr. Packervan, but uh, you know she will produce text messages. And you've asked her if she has the original. I think something that she wrote. You asked her to bring yes, that we if she could. Yes, we talked about that. Yeah. And and again, something she has to look for. And if, and if she can, then then that is something you can discuss doing. I'm not sure if that was. I'm not sure if that was requested in the subpoena. Maybe it was. I right. mean, it was rather broad. So maybe it was. Maybe it was not. Okay. Um, but in any case, so I think that. Really, this can be handled Great. by by meet and confer between you and Mr. Packervan. We'll be copied on it, and you guys can work it out. Yes. And, uh, huh? I think I did. Yeah. We, yes. we have it. Don't worry. Okay. I'm sure it will go through we do. Does that, that make we do. sense? I, mean, I think it makes it. We just okay. want the information. So understood. Think, That's yeah. understood. That's fine. Good meeting you Very both. Okay. Nice, well, nice meeting you. Nice meeting you. Sorry. That's the record. Today's video deposition of Raquel Pennington, the total number of media used was two. The time is approximately 6.07 p.m. And we're going off the record.